Happy Friday! It just might be my last Friday Sews of the Year. So I thought I'd pop on here to tell you about some of the things I've made, a recent video I really hope you'll consider watching, and about gift sewing week. I also have a question to ask you later in the video. I think some of you will be so excited about this, but it does make me a little bit nervous. So just stay tuned for that. That's um, towards the end. All right, uh, since my last Friday Sews, I've sewn so much. It's been since August since I did a Friday Sews, like late August. Wow. <laughs> I did make the five questions no edit video, which was fun. And I also uploaded a video on how to waterproof fabric with otter wax. But as far as things I've sewn, and I'm talking about things I've made here on YouTube live, I've made the Paddington Top Free Pattern by Peppermint Magazine. Uh, an Auburn Blazer by Cash Moret, which was a sew along. So everything from fit to drafting to sewing and finishing is in those videos in bite sized chunks. Uh, I also sewed my laundry basket pattern, which came out in September, the glissando pants by Love Notions. I'm actually wearing those right now. <laughs> uh, the Piper Boho Tunic by Wardrobe by Me Patterns. This project was provided to me by Wardrobe by Me, and I wear it every week. I love the thing. Uh, I also made the Kids Hide Hoodie by Five Out of Four Patterns. I love how these came out. I wanted them to look as ready to wear as possible, and they did. Uh, I came out with another pattern in October called the Cocoon Project Bag, so I sewed a few variations on the pattern. Uh, next I sewed the Men's Ryan Raglan by 5 out of 4 patterns, I've made a lot of their patterns lately, as a cozy pullover for my husband. And then a unique project called the Mercer Top by Sewing in the City. This project was also provided to me by them. Next, I sewed another men's Fairfield button-up. I've made a lot of those, but this time I matched plaid and did an in-depth video about matching. This came out beautiful. My husband wears it every day. Yes, I said every day. I made myself an ideal bag, which is also one of my patterns, but it's free. It's quite a project too. A little background about that bag. At the beginning of the panini, as I like to call it, so I don't get demonetized, <laughs> the chat and I distracted ourselves with making the perfect bag. They really did make the perfect bag too. Fair warning, this bag has a, it has pattern pieces and videos, but no written instructions. It's quite a bag too. The video walks you through it very simply and it's not hard to sew. Um, I finally made myself one and I absolutely love it. Mine looks quite different too. It's very versatile, but it suits my needs. All right, continuing in November, I sewed the Zen Pants by 5 out of 4 Patterns as well, which turned out amazing. These are a stretch woven pull-on pants and I made these for my daughter. She loves them. Can you believe it? Um, let's see. Another project that was given to me was the Men's Strathcona Henley by Thread Theory Designs. Hearts Fabric sent it to me. I love it when they do this. I send it back to them and, and it hangs in their shop so customers can see it. And I don't keep it. It's a great trade. Lastly, I altered my Ames jeans by Cashmerette to make them higher in the rise. I needed to replace the zipper in these, so I figured it was the perfect time to remove the whole waistband and replace the zipper. I also recut the waistband twice the width. I love these jeans, but they were just a little too low for me. Um, they have a sort of sailor vibe now. <laughs> um, and really the most time consuming part was ripping it all apart first. Nothing a little movie on the TV can't help though, right? All right, the other thing I did was I finally installed this buttonhole attachment on my industrial machine. It looks like this, it's kind of a gizmo, you know. My industrial only sews straight, so it cannot make a zigzag for a buttonhole. This little gizmo does the zigging and the zagging, and unfortunately, because my machine has electronics, it won't work because I can't raise the presser foot. Otherwise, I think it'd be great. Um, it's in last Saturday's video, if anyone has one they've been meaning to install. I did successfully install it and identified all the places to adjust it, but alas, it's just not compatible. I admit I, I kind of knew this was a possibility, but I held out hope, you know. So obviously I've been busy. I've made quite a few things off camera too, and this time of year is always packed with extra sewing, right? Which brings me to my annual gift sewing week. 
So next week, I'll be live every day, Tuesday through Saturday, so for five days, December 7th through the 11th. I'll be streaming at my usual time at 11 a.m. Pacific, except on Tuesday and Friday. I'll be live much. Here's my schedule. I'll put it on the screen. Almost all of these are free patterns too. I'll link them in the description. So I'm making a soup bowl cozy so you don't burn your hands or, or freeze them since, you know, I use cream. Uh, adult pajama bottoms by five out of four patterns. Um, I've made their kids pattern also, like their, their um, PJ pants, so you can check out that video. Uh, the neck, a neck warmer for the microwave, and I'm making this a free pattern in two styles. This pattern isn't quite done and on my website yet, but I'll let you know when it is. And I'm also making the hillside tote by Noodlehead. Uh, this is my mom's favorite purse. That's not a free pattern. And lastly, the Sam apron by Helen's Closet. I'll be making it specifically for my husband and sticking to the instructions. And I'm going to do the crossback version. He's a woodworker and a bike mechanic, and he's kind of excited too. So that makes me excited to do it too. So that's my gift sewing extravaganza this year. It was pretty hard to narrow it down. There's so many good patterns out there. Um, I'll definitely be checking out Frugalissima's video on free patterns for gift sewing. Sam always has her pulse on the free pattern and environmental conscious sewing projects out there. So I'm going to check that out too. I'm always looking for things that don't have to fit on someone, right? All right. So this brings me to, okay. Remember that sort of like eccentric project I made this summer to get rid of my fabric scraps? I really hate throwing my scrap fabric in the trash can. I generate so much of it. I cannot make a quilt or do all those scrap busting projects. I promise it's just too much. And you can check out the live streams for this to hear all the discussions surrounding this. So a short recap. I've had this idea for more than 10 years to use my natural fiber scraps as mulch in the garden. At the time I couldn't because I had chickens and you just can't leave anything loose in the yard with those little buggers. It's just like nothing stays where you put it. So I've been noodling on this idea for a while and it finally hit me. Why don't I make a sort of like blanket with the scraps inside? This way it corrals them and I can lay them in the areas I want and also reposition them if needed. So I did an experiment and it made a sort of like Christmas tree skirt style thing and a rectangular one too. And I stuffed them with my scraps. You probably remember me talking about this. They're working beautifully. The weeds stopped growing under them and the plants needed water so much less, like so much less. One plant needed water every day at the height of summer. And then after the mulch mat, it only needed watering once a week. So my husband was thrilled with that. I found the one drawback is how they look. Like I don't mind them at all, um, especially now that they're dirty, they kind of blend in and especially the ones under the trees, but they don't blend into the environment very well. So I kept thinking, is it too much to consider like making my own fabric? It's not quite in the spirit of using less waste, but maybe more folks would find them a more attractive idea if they blended in. Enter one of the many spoon flower sales. <laughs> I quickly took some photos of like four areas in my yard where I want to put them. I uploaded them and voila, I made my own camouflage. My mom even wants to make like tiny ones to stop the squirrels from digging in her potted plants in the fall. <laughs> they turned out pretty amazing too. I have four one yard pieces to experiment with. Check it out. So I have this one, which is like the redwood part, part of my yard. You can kind of see the color's a little washed out right here because I have a light on right here. And then this is, I, we have olive trees. So you can see that there's olives. Do you see the olives and the olive leaves in there? Um, but that, lo it looks identical to the ground. I actually love the way the ground looks under all the olive trees. It's kind of, kind of interesting. Um, this is under the orch, in the orchard. It's this little tiny microgreen that grows throughout the orchard. <laughs> and uh, we have, you know, that'd be great to have some mulch mats out there. And then lastly, this is like one of the bare dirt areas because there's a lot of clay in our soil. So some areas of my yard, they actually are just pretty much bare dirt. And it, it doesn't look um, as terrible as it sounds, honestly. Um, it's very appropriate for the environment. You know, it's a very dry climate where I live. So, um, and I have one of the mulch mats where this bare dirt is right now, and it'll be awesome if I put something down there, like 
You're not even going to see it. That spot is the one that has the little plant that needs a lot of water. <laughs> I'll, I'll definitely be sewing these soon and I'll share the results and show you pictures. My bin of scraps I'd normally throw away is already full, so it's perfect timing too. I'm really excited. <laughs> All right, okay. Lastly, I wanted to mention a video I recently made about expectations we have about sewing patterns. And you may have already watched it. I really appreciate it, thank you. But if you haven't, I wanted to ask if you would consider watching it because I'm very eager to hear what people think and to get as many opinions as possible. I'm learning so much and I have some pretty amazing plans with the trajectory I'm heading about patterns and things like that. It was a very big project to make the video and I spent a lot of time and care on it to get it just right. I think I'll probably surprise you with quite a few things too. I've had three people tell me it was even a bit emotional to hear what I had to say and a kind of relief. So please, consider watching it. I'll link it in the description, especially if you're frustrated with patterns or you want to learn more about pattern drafting. I'm kicking off a series of honest pattern reviews, and this is the introduction, so to speak. So I cover fit, sizing, and drafting, as well as the results of a poll on Instagram I conducted, which kicked off that video. All right, well, it's linked in the description. If you don't watch anything of mine but one video, please consider that one. And thanks. <laughs> Okay, to sum up, and on that note, I wanna put a call out to folks for a sort of live review of patterns by their hashtags. If you're considering making a pattern, but you're not sure about like some of the elements of it, or if you should buy it, would you, know, would you consider telling me the hashtag for it? And for those of you who don't use hashtags, you can still find this out by looking at the pattern company's description of the pattern on their website. It'll look like this. Sometimes customers come up with their own, so it can be tricky and there might be multiples. It's always good to make sure you're using the proper hashtag. That way there's more data under it. Okay, so one example of like a hashtag is um, if I were looking up the wardrobe by me Piper Boho tunic, it might not just be Piper Boho tunic. It might be WBM for wardrobe by me Piper tunic or something like that. Like they may have come up with their own so it's really good to check and see. Um, you see this a lot, like even Helen's Closet, I think puts HC in front of hers. Um, I always put SS in front of my pattern. So SS laundry basket, um, SS project bag, things like that. Uh, so it's really good to kind of check those out. Um, if you use hashtags regularly, it's really good to try and find the right one. But you know, in cases like the Tamarack jacket by uh, Grainline Studio, which by the way, just had an expansion made. I love that jacket. Um, they, um, there are a few hashtags for that. Like there was a, for a while there, like this kind of little community effort um, that if you were made a Tamarack jacket, you were in the Tamarack society. So there's that hashtag. There's Tamarack jacket, there's grain line Tamarack. So there's like a few places and um, it's worth looking at all three spaces if you're wanting to sew that jacket, right? So I just say this just so that you know um, that hashtags can be a little bit misleading what you think it might be. It might not be that. So I would just double check and usually it really is under the, the description of the pattern somewhere like that. Or it's in the at the end of the instructions or on the cover of the instructions. I see it there too. So, all right. Even if you don't use Instagram, um, just comment with your hashtag you want reviewed. I'll look at the fit any things that pop out at me as far as what to watch for and, and maybe recommended fabrics and stuff like that. I may even be able to say what sort of body type could work well for the garment. And to be clear, all bodies work in all garments, but I think you know what I mean. If you want to be anonymous, just send me an email or an Instagram direct message. Email's in the description as well. I have to admit, this makes me a little bit nervous to do, but I don't plan on doing this to point out patterns that are bad. Like I say in my video, well, I'll just let you watch it, but just know that I come in peace and I just want to help folks identify things. And I'll show you exactly how I look at patterns before I buy them or I sew them. In my video, I give three tips for this that they aren't magical, but they're tried and true. So another reason to watch that video. Okay. That's it for me this week. I hope you'll watch that video. I keep mentioning it. Sorry. I hope you'll give me your hashtags. More than one is fine. 
And I hope to see you next week during our gift cramming, I mean, sewing session. <laughs> gift sewing session, right? All right, happy sewing.